this is the uh, June 1949 um, export standard project uh, that we've been doing over, I think we've had it for about a year now. Um, it went to uh, Irv's for uh, bodywork, um, and we've managed to save a lot of it. We've got, say, uh, it's had channels, um, wings, uh, this front quarter here was, uh, was completely toast, this, this, this whole panel here. But this is, uh, that's actually a body cut from, a, from another car, uh, from another, another 40s car, which is nice. So it's sort of original, original metal going back in. Um, and this is, yeah, this is this shell. It's still got work to do. Um, not much welding, but a little bit of beating into shape and uh, some paint. But all in all, it's, uh, yeah, it's coming together quite well. We haven't really, um, I mean, Irv was just too busy to, um, to be taking video as they were doing it. Uh, and he's in Cumbria, which is a thousand miles away from us. So, <laughs> so that wasn't uh, easy for us to get up there either. So we're going to have to go from here. I haven't really done any video on it so far just because there's, we wanted to wait for something interesting to do. It's quite an interesting car because a, um, a June 49, it had the, the press first, first month of the press bumpers um, and the last month of the press deck lid, which is, um, I think I've actually got over here, uh, which is quite an interesting feature, which sort of, it separates a, a, uh, a sort of wartime VW, if you like, from a, from a, this, this pressing here was, was um, last, last on there this month. But the sort of combination of uh, the, the bumpers and the deck lid make it a sort of one month only car. Uh, it was also in the first 100 cars to ever get it exported into Sweden, which is kind of cool. And um, being, being a standard model is nice. Uh, well, when, when it was actually built, all cars were standards. There was, um, there was no deluxe trim on them. They, uh, they were a very base model car. Um, it was sort of towards the end of 1949 when they uh, started doing proper exporting and they, they introduced the body trim and, you know, the new interiors and um, various other changes, uh, one of which is hydraulic brakes. They started going from utilitarian to actual nice cars, didn't they? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's not that <clears throat> much difference between this and you know, uh, a wartime car. I mean, the, the, the front axle from this car is still out of a Kubel wagon. Um, you know, things like that. It's got plenty of cog logo parts still, still on it, which, uh, makes it, you know, which makes it kind of unique. Yeah. But, uh, the, what we, what we're actually going to do today is, uh, go through the cable braking system. Now, um, cable brakes, everybody speaks about cable brakes and say, oh yeah, it's a cable brake car, but there's not actually that many people who have used them or even, you know, put them together or there's very a little information out there apart from a great thread on the Samba. Um, so we're going to try and go through this car uh, and, and show you, show you what we're doing as we and by cable brakes. We mean not hydraulic like you'd find. Yeah. So cable brakes are a cars. mechanical braking system. Uh, it's pretty much, if you think how your handbrake works on the back wheels of your um, later Beetle, that is, that is how they work all over the car. Believe it or not, they carried on doing cable brake cars on the standard models uh, until 1962 or maybe 1964. I'm not in Europe. I'm not 100% yeah, on that. Mixed reviews. <clears throat> but the... Um, the actual, the actual system was it worked well enough to carry on selling them actually into the 60s, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, this is this is the the floor pan um, for a June 49 car. Uh, no, it's interesting bits like the chassis numbers here, um, which is peculiar considering it has the has the plate already there, but they they were still stamping in the middle of the chassis. Um, so the the, the, like I said, the front axle is um, from a Kuba wagon. It's actually being it needs to be welded at the moment, uh, uh, which has different shocks, different, uh, but the same principle. Um, on the frame head, there's uh, there's 
it's set up for the cable braking system with these two holes here. Um, I mean, this part here is the same on a hydraulic, but if you notice the little cutout hole at the edge there, which is, that's actually to operate the uh, brake lights, the, the, the wire for the brake lights is different. Um, this is all that clamps the seats in, it's just these wing nuts, which was, uh, the idea was you could, you could just take your seat out of the car and um, have your picnic. Uh, you've got a heater, a nice uh, a cog logo gear knob on there, which is kind of cool. Uh, the, rear, the rear shock absorbers, I'll actually get one. Uh, we've got one over here, which st I still need to rebuild and recondition, but you've got, that is actually, it's a, it's a lever shock, which uh, goes from here and into, into the hole there. And then that lever, as it moves up and down, that's your suspension. Uh, well, your spring plate, that's to dampen the suspension. And obviously the pans come back in a similar sort of state, welded. Yeah, the pans come back uh, welded, finished. I mean, we can actually put some photographs up in the, in the yeah. video, but you know, there was nothing left of this. It was, it was just pretty much the spine, the rear torsion housing, which was all saved nicely. Um, but the, it's, it's brand new pan halves, um, which are, Actually, the first of the, this is the sort of first era of this shape floor pan. Um, all Beatles before, sort of 48s and early 49s, they actually had a Kuba wagon floor pan because they were still using all the stuff left over from the war. Um, yeah, but we, you know, we, started, we started fitting a few so bits. Doing little bits. They're kind of mock, mocked up. I've done the, um, yeah, cables and such. Um, I pulled the uh, clutch cable through because when we fit, fit this pedal assembly, I think it's something that needs to be done as we do. But this is all quite new to us. We haven't actually done this system before. So you're going to have to take the journey with us because, <laughs> yeah, there might, be some, do it wrong. <laughs> there might be some effing and jeffing. Pretty much everything you're going to see now goes inside that tunnel. So here's the pedal box I was talking about. These are your brake cables which fit to the front. So they will come out of those tubes like that. And this part here will go to the, uh, go to the brake drums. Now the brake drums, components and whatever at the moment are being reconditioned, or we need to recondition, should I say. So we'll do that as a different video, but this should actually show you how the system works. Now, there are your rears, pedal assembly. You notice the only difference between this and your normal ped pedal assembly is, is this part here which is, that is what actually levers your, your brakes. This is your main brake rod, which then connects into that. See, which will move forward and backwards. That comes out of the front of the tunnel. And these are the components. You've got an adjusting screw, cover plate, that little spring washer, which all of this stuff has had to be sourced from Germany and God knows where, and that's your return spring. It returns all your brakes. If you come down the other end, <coughs> This here is the, um, is the handbrake rod, which then fits in like this. The handbrake, again, it's the same as a normal 40s handbrake or, or a normal beetle handbrake, but it has this crudely welded on um, bump here. And which, we've not uh, done that. That's, well, no, we haven't yeah, done that. That was well Wolfsburg that. did that in, uh, in 1949, which then fits into here. And obviously the normal, um, the normal crank. Tell them a little pub fact about that. Oh, all right. Here you go. <clears throat> People ask what this is for. So nothing passes through it. Nothing, you know, nothing goes in it. It doesn't locate anywhere. It's just a peculiar shaped cutout. Uh, we actually found out that. It's that. It was the um, it's that was pressed out just to save metal, which is quite which is quite cool. So they've literally just stamped it out of there, stamped and, out there, and, and used, used it. that offcut in there. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And they carried on using a very similar plate all the way through um, production of beetles. So when you think of that saving that little bit of metal there, it might say, "Oh well, what's that?" A couple of pence a car, pens, yeah. but when you're doing 23 million cars, yeah. that's a big saving. Up. <clears throat> so that, they're the components. Now, on the floor there, I bet that makes not a lot of sense. 
it's totally weird. It's totally different to any beetle that most people have worked on. Like I said, I've been into these for, well, my whole adult life, and I haven't, I haven't built this system before. I've never done it. This is all completely new. Um, it was very hard to get hold of the parts because um, some of them were missing. Uh, so I, I've, there's parts in just this kit that have come from Sweden, Germany, America, the UK, uh, just, you know, a washer from here, a clip from here, um, even more when I start to go into that. Uh, unbelievably hard to get hold of. So what I think we'll do is it's the most beautiful day ever and it's coming towards the end of the year and we're not going to be having um, a lot more of uh, this sunshine. So let's take this pan out in the sunshine and, fit, and try and fit this system. BRB. So I think we're going to want as much access as we can possibly get in here. Um, we might want to take that off just because yeah. that's another hole to play with. I think locating that gear knob, I mean, sorry, that um, handbrake in that shaft is going to be a shit job. Like, there's, there's nothing to, you know, you can't get your fingers in there. I've got skinny fingers and I ain't doing for shit. And then you've got the front here, which is, you take this clip off. Uh, all right, so I've already got carried away pissing around with this. So this is the, I've fitted the brake switch. Uh, I probably shouldn't have because I'm probably going to break it trying to get everything in there. But um, I want to take it off. Yeah. That's that that is constantly closed there. When that uh, rod shoots out, it opens that up, and that's what turns the brake so on off. Which is a, uh, and I still use that on like the last of the air cooled 911s. Exactly the same system. Exactly the same switch. Is it the same yeah. switch? <laughs> yeah. Porsche still still use it to this day. Well, I sell it to this day. So, Dan, where do you think we should start? I think um, probably that, that main rod first. Because um, we need that. I disagree. This main rod and then that, um, that section there. You know, the... I still disagree. I think we push the cables through first. Yeah. Reason being, we take this rod, put it in here, and that is... I mean, I'm pretty sure it just fits in like that. And that goes all the way to the bottom to try and get, there you go. That, that's how that rod sits. Those cables, if we fitted the rod, you need to put, we'll need to pull the cables thread through, through first. Right, yeah, yeah. So I say that we try and thread the cables. So I was thinking it was like a, you know, like a mountain bike where it would just seat in there. No. But yeah, it's not, is it? So your two, your two threading points are there and there, these two. And then at the back, they come out here and on the other side. So the conduit will sit up against that to the drum. That's what, that's what I'm saying, isn't it? That's pretty much exactly what it does, yeah. So let's pull this out. There goes that brake switch. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? Start with the fronts or the rears? Let's start with the fronts because they're yeah, shorter. That'll be the easiest ones. The other thing that I noticed with this is I haven't actually tried one in there yet, but that's quite a big, it's quite a big, um, what would you call it on the end? Lump. Lump. <laughs> so if you look at the actual width, come around here, if you look at the actual width of the, the pipe, that is, that's a tight fit. Oh, well, that one was easy enough. Yeah, great fit. Still got some, and then this, this part here actually sort of like just pushes all the way in there. Right, so that. Then go to the drum. So that's a good chance to say. So if you imagine there's a cam in your brake drum that opens and shuts, your brake shoes. If you look at that there, it's just pulling it in and out from there. See how many of these are blocked. Right, that's tight. Mm. So like maybe we're going from this end to see if there's a, how far we can get down it. So we're about here, aren't we? Yeah, I'm hoping that's not a blob of weld in there. I mean, it's quite a good uh, example of just because something's been rotted through, you know, we've had things in and out of there to check, but it doesn't mean that it's, it's big enough to actually take 
that whole wide. That seems pretty clear. But you know, a, a, a bit of warp in here yeah. from from that from that weld, and all of a sudden you you've got no chance. I think that's what it is at the angle of it. Like, I think you're right. I think it's like a bit of penetration from the weld right where it starts to get small. Do you know what I mean in the tube? Yeah. I don't know if we've got a reamer that size, so we could just a reamer. Well, I tell you what, clean it out. You bring a little hammer, a little hammer, a lily hammer, because once it's past that corner, yeah, it's it's free and clear from there. Some <laughs> get stuck. No, it's, no, it's good and in there. <laughs> I think that went then, didn't it? Not quite. That did. Okay. So, what that was was just a little bit of teasing to get it through. If you bring it above, you might be able to see the angle of that, where that's been welded, a bit of penetration, you know, well, you know, a bit of warping or whatever. It's yeah. got to get that around that corner. But, tight fit. Yeah, it's even quite, quite tight for to get this this up. Mm. Mm. Let's see how the rears go, because there's a lot further for that this one to travel. Not only is it further to travel, there's uh, a lot more pipe for it to go through. Um, but... So far, so good. It seems to be a wider conduit. Does that come out? Yep, she's out. How's it looking? Got some slack? Yeah, yeah. A bit further along than the, the other one. Right. I mean, I don't know how much adjustment is in the is in the rear in the I shoes when be you quite do a it. Bit on the drum, I mean right? there might be 20 mil and then we yeah. haven't got to even think about it, but right, so I'm thinking that's a big build-up of grease rather than right. anything. Just really old grease. You'll blow an airline for it. Probably wouldn't hurt. We can just pl plug the airline in this end. Just blow out any crap that might be in there. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens if we go down this end. I just think we keep doing that until all that's gone. This is hard work. <laughs> Good news is though, once this is done, that is actually cables done <laughs> every single every single um internal pipe internal pipe yeah yeah dealt with uh, apart from the fuel line which is really blocked <laughs> which is, <laughs> which, there you go you give it a blow and i'll rod rod giggity two hours later i think this might go you ready yeah Yeah, yeah, uh, there it is. Do the crap on the end of that. It looks like you've just dragged it through a, like mud. Do you know what I mean? There it is. Success. Ish. Woo! Does it move free inside it? Yeah. All right. So there's a. It's a bit weird that one of them is six inches shorter than the other, but <laughs> probably fine. Okay, now the interesting thing, listeners, is that this is supposed to be the easy part. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you, but <laughs> sweating. It is 150 degrees outside. So I think the next part is the handbrake rod. 
Because if we, if that'll be in the way, won't it? So I think that has to go in, tied to the handbrake there, like so. And then we'll have to f around with this. Unfortunately, it's not a late one actually has a cut out there, so you can slot it in afterwards, but early ones have to go in in situ, annoyingly. Do you think maybe put that in first, that and the handbrake lever? So then when we push the rod in, we can seat it at home? I think that we put this through the gap, yeah. float it around, one of us is on this and one of us is on that, and try and locate it in there. Once that's in there, that can slot in like so, yeah. and then that can Hit go in. through. So we're saying that main tube first. Main tube first. Let's do it. All right. So. Could you give that a wriggle there and I'll have a look through here. Can't see it. But we are we judging how far? Yeah. So I reckon that little notch on the end there. That's where the end sits in, doesn't it? So that's where it should sit. Which means that that is gonna be sticking out about an inch. Yeah. Okay. Should we put that um should we put the adjuster screw in as well? So this screw here pretty much what gives you your handbrake adjustment. So if we screw that. We got all the way in for now. Yeah, all the way in for now. There we go. <clears throat> but. That sounds promising. Yeah. Oh yeah, come have a look in there. Can you actually see with the camera? Yep, perfect. Right, so I have it on good authority that this is the hardest bit of the whole job, <laughs> is getting the handbrake located uh, into that. Really, because I, I don't want to jinx it, well, but. Let's not jinx it. <laughs> but that looks pretty well cradled there. All I've seen from when I talk to people is, good luck getting that handbrake located, mate. Can you give that a push on that end? Yeah. There, dude, I think that's it, that's it, that's it. Right, push it, push it all the way in. That is, that's, that's home. Is that pushing it forward and backwards? Yep. Do it again. Just try and keep a bit of pressure on it as well. Oh yeah, Dude, <laughs> easy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's see if we can get this in now. It's just that has to slot. It's all the way in, doesn't it? I can't even see the hole. It's got to come out. Yeah, we live and learn. That was us laughing at everyone, like, that was easy. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a good mind to just put this so in. I then try and rod it from after. Yeah, See, this is, say, this is what's annoying. This keeps on shooting out and causing so let's this. Let's take the rod out, try and hook that ratchet in. So the issue we're having is on the original, you can see it's cracked along there, along there. And that's just splaying this bottom end out, which is then making it too wide to go in. Right, now you can try and locate the uh, the rod. Ah, ah, ah. Pull it back, pull it back, whatever you're doing, pull it. I'm not touching Fuck. it. <laughs> Is it in? Yeah, it feels like it. Give it a wriggle. Hang on, I'm taking it back give out. It, give it a twist. Because of your finger. Right, yeah, that's it. Okay. Let it off, let's see if it comes. Uh, it's the thing is, I think we need right, to, yeah, before I'm, we let it off, I'm we need to stick the dowel in. Yeah, I think it's on. 
looks like. He's got a top. Watch out. Slightly this way. There you go, set. Alright. So, you put some pressure on that. Yep. Yeah. Should work it. Yeah. Show the folks at home. So, I'm going to pull my handbrake on. You ready? Handbrake on? Yeah. It come out? Yep. And back on? And back in. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Now the next difficult bit. <laughs> yeah, no, all right, that was supposed to be, that was supposed to be hard. Now the next thing I've been told is a buy-in is, is that under here, there is, uh, you can't see it, it's just gonna be too dark in there. Yeah. But there is a locator for this, for the return spring. So return spring, goes onto the bottom of that like so just like that <laughs> I think that's what's gonna and happen and then on the inside of the tunnel now I'm just, so inside here is the same clip as this and I might say whatever you do don't drop this in the tunnel so I say we strap a pair of mole grips under that yeah so we can't and there's mole grips into our favorite tool today somewhere in there Oh, there you go. Straight on. It's got a bit of give to it as well, actually, hasn't it? Well, that wasn't the nightmare that it was supposed to be. But uh, it's, um, imagine once that's in and we've got right. a lot less room to play with. Yeah, that might be in the way as well. That's what I'm thinking. Then. Maybe we should get a cable tie or something to just clip it around. So, main shaft. I guess we do have to get that pedal assembly located into there through that hole. I say we put this through first. Let's try that. Get it yeah. in position. So as this sits on top of that. On top of the spring. Well, this. Yeah, sits in that. Sits in that, and that goes on top of the spring. So I guess that'll just follow that all the way down. And then these. On this from the top, it might, might be a bit more obvious. So I guess these all fit like so. And, and that then, adjustment screw. So let me get it there. Wants to come through this hole. It does. So we'll probably have to do that with air pliers. <laughs> there you go. So this, I think, is going to be the hard part have that thing needs to locate into that and this needs to somehow stay on there we can get attention on this edge Oh, dude. Come on. Yeah. Everything's come off. Huh. Uh, it's going really okay. If you look at it, it's uh, Yeah. We've just got a nice collar on the way in, that's what's just been on it. Over 30 minutes of us making no progress whatsoever. <laughs> people what they want. <laughs> Do you know what? The, 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 these, nice we've had these difficulties with also myself reconditioning every part for this. Yeah. Spending you know, real time on it. See you later. I've got some there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a camel. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll just I'll, I'll drink eight gallons, but then I'm good before, for a week. You... Okay. 
Okay. This way probably turn off. Flash. No. Don't, 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 touch that. don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do that? That's uh, pedals. Handbrake's still in. Feels good. Handbrake. Handbrake's good. So should we drop that back now? Yeah. That's going to give us the maximum amount of room because yeah. obviously that's. The handbrake's good. Let's just check this. This clutch is still on. Yep. Sweet. It's the dream that is. Uh, this is definitely wrong or in the wrong place one or the other. Because that's supposed to be like all the way down here, isn't it? That's how much trouble it is. It's kind of it's got more than like that's less than that's less than a centimetre. Do you reckon it's the wrong way around and that, that's meant to be this side? Something. But then it's gonna hit on that Something I think it's needs that that cutting off. I think it's the wrong pedal arm. Doesn't fit very well anyway, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Okay. Feels good. In. Get that clip on quick. <laughs> uh, or return spring. Yeah. Right, I'm not sure how to do that from what I've got. <laughs> oh, sorry for YouTube. Really paranoid about this. You drop that spring in the tunnel. I'm gonna take it all out, fish it out. Feels like it really needs an access hatch. Yeah. Do that push on the on the brake. And back. Yeah. Let go. Yeah, that's yeah. it. All right. So, so, so. So, can you see the can you see the switch? So now the switch is on, and then. That's right. Like that. Okay, so then we have this is the cover plate that holds that. So what I think the, the, the reason for this cover plate is for the adjustment of this. So that's how you adjust your handbrake through here, which moves that rod further and backwards. Uh -huh. Agreed? Yeah. That cover plate fits onto there. That wants to come out as far as it can really for now. Um, and it's got a spring washer to hold it back, which looks really hard, like it's going to be hard to get that in and then get the thing through. So it will be a matter of a pair of pliers, I imagine, and then stick the... All those there. Uh, well, no, to, to compress the... Yeah, clip, and then... And then... Oop, careful. And then drop that through. Which, So that's what operates your brake light. Where the uh, split pin is, that's your adjustment for the handbrake. So now, if I push the pedal, that is what's going to operate your brakes. Same at the back, Dan, if you can pump that pedal. And then the handbrake. So that handbrake actually locks on all four wheels at a time, which is kind of cool for those four wheel drifts. <laughs> but there you have it. I would say that that is probably, it's a bit harder than I thought. Um, I think if you know what you're doing, uh, if you if you've done it once you've done it and you know that the order makes a big difference yeah. First you want to assemble the handbrake Fit it without worrying about the rod 
um, then pull through your cables then put the handbrake rod in make sure that that's located it's easier to pull, pull the gear stick out you can actually locate it from there then um, once you've done that then you can bolt your pedal assembly in completely um, make sure that the uh, clutch cables on there because you don't want to be doing that at a later date uh, and that's then be impossible yeah, yeah. Get well, in in I mean, if you look here, yeah. you can see where someone's cut into the side previously to do that job. Um, and then you put in your main bar and clip everything together. Uh, what the, it's, um, it's quite tempting to try, like we did, to, to wrestle, the, wrestle the pedal assembly and the handbrake in whilst trying to get the bar on. Onto the bar, yeah. No, I'd say if I if I was to do it again, I'd definitely just just um, bolt everything in and then fuss around in the tube. Also, a better inspection lamp might be good, uh, just to just to see in there properly of what's going on. Um, yeah, but all in all, it's you know it works, uh, and it's a yeah I, I call it a win. Thanks for watching the first episode of the 49 build series. Please do consider liking and subscribing, maybe even ring the notification bell so you don't miss any future 49 videos. Thanks very much.